Hey guys, so let's go through the PCOS application and let me show you a couple of scenarios early in the application process that kind of get people mixed up. So one of the main documents I always reference is this directly from CMS. Now, I don't know, I haven't found a newer version than the 2007, but this goes through different scenarios. And so for example, scenario one doesn't apply a physician assistant. Scenario 2A, non-physician practitioner has a sole proprietorship, um, and it goes through what a sole proprietor is, but basically this individual um, is enrolling, will have a private practice operating as a sole proprietorship. He or she does not complete section 4A. Now, let me do this real quick. Let's take a look at what section 4A is. I should have had this up and running, sorry guys. Here we go. So if we scroll down section, so we're in section two, section three, okay, section 4A. So you can see here, this is the business information. You will, um, he or she does not complete section 4A of the 855i. If the non-physician practitioner will have a private practice operating as a sole proprietorship and will also be working in a group, an a, a CMS 855R should be submitted for each group organization to which they'll be reassigning benefits. So this is basically saying you're going to be treating your own Medicare beneficiaries um, as a sole proprietor, and then you're also going to be employed or working in a group treating their Medicare beneficiaries. That's when you're going to do the 855i, but you're not going to do section 4a, but you are going to submit an 855r for each organization you're working for. The practitioner completes sections 4b, item 2. So I'll scroll down here. Um, okay, here, 4b, item to, well, I know you'll have to do that. Section 4B, comma, item two. I don't see an item two in 4B because there are no items in 4B, so now there's items in 4D, the physician, non-physician, MPI are reported in section 4C. So I'm wondering if um, the PICO system, you know, obviously we always do our applications in PICOs, but that's where there might be a 4B part section two. So we're gonna take a look at that, but Okay, so the EIN of the sole proprietorship, if it's been issued, is reported in section 4F. Okay, scenario, so that's scenario 2A. Scenario 2B, um, a non-physician practitioner with no sole proprietorship, no business, will be reassigning all of his benefits to a group, will not have a private practice location. He or she provides the Medicare ID number and the MPI in sections 1A. The non-physician practitioner completes all appropriate sections in the 855I. Um, line item one in section 4B1 is checked yes. And the physician, non-physician practitioner enters the names of the groups or organizations. This is who you're reassigning benefits to. The so this is basically a scenario where you're not treating your own Medicare beneficiaries, you're only employed 
by a group. That's what this is referring to. Scenario three, a physician, non-physician practitioner who is a sole owner of a professional corporation, PA or LLC. This is where a lot of you are, sole owner. So you are going to, um, let me find it here. Okay, billing Medicare through that business entity must furnish his or her MPI, type one, and the MPI of the organization, type two, so the main difference here between scenario three and scenario two, my understanding is scenario 2A, there is no type two MPI. There is no MPI for the business. The MPI would be entered type one, the EIN of the sole proprietorship, proprietorship would be reported. So the business doesn't have a type two MPI. Now, I don't know really anybody who's doing this. Um, everybody in the world is scenario three, where you have a separate business entity and you have your type one MPI, the business has a type two MPI, when the sole owner elects to bill Medicare through the organization or group, he or she must complete sections one, two, and three of the CMS E55I with his individual information. Section 4A captures information about the organization and the organization's type two MPI. Remember, the remainder of the A51 is to be completed with the group information. When the A55I is submitted by a sole owner, neither the 855B nor the 855R need be completed. So, I mean, that's, it's, it's really tricky. Um, my understanding is the time you do an A55B is when you have a business with multiple owners. So let's look at scenario four. The non-physician who is an owner, but not a sole owner of the PCPA LLC or a partnership or a partner. So um, a non-physician practitioner who is part owner of a PC, yada, 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 um, who will be rendering services through that group or organization or partnership must complete the A55I and or the reassignment in accordance with the instructions in scenario 2B. So that's this one right here, 2B. Uh, partnership is enrolling or partnership is enrolling using the CMS 855B. So this would be the scenario. So let, let's look at this. I want to grab full attention here. And then in the next video, we'll jump in Picos. So basically I have three scenarios. You are a sole proprietor. You are not billing through a separate business entity. It's just you. You complete the 855i. Let's say you're doing that, but you're also gonna do some contract work for a group. So you do the 855i and you do the 855r to reassign benefits to that group. That's it. Scenario number two. You are solely going to be an employee of a group or organization that's Part B Medicare, you know, outpatient services. You submit the 855I and the 855R. Okay. Scenario number three. I know I said three, but there's four. You um, have an LLC or some other business entity that's separate from you, but you are the sole owner, owner member, managing member, any of that stuff. There's nobody else in the business except you. You do the A55I. Now you got me mixed up. Let me go back and make sure I don't say something. So, and that's it. The A55I, no R, no B, okay. And then fourth scenario, 
you are a part owner of a group, an organization, in which case you will do the A55I, the R, and the B, okay? So I know a lot of you, even as sole owners, completed the 855B, that's fine. It's not wrong. It's ju just not necessary um, if you are the sole owner, okay? The B is for a group, multiple owners. You can be a group of one, it will still work, you'll still get everything just like normal. So guys, this will probably make a little more uh, sense when we jump into the actual Picos tutorials and videos. So if you're a member of Zero to Paid, this is all included. If you're not a member of Zero to Paid, this is part of the benefit of being a member is you get access to the video where I, I literally go through every line in the enrollment process so that you can be contracted with Medicare correctly the first time and you don't have to worry about going through and, and correcting errors and, and having delays. So guys, watch the next video.